Good morning, Saints. Vicar Dennis here with you. This is your devotion for uh, January 18th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, today we continue in, in Ezekiel, our reading uh, for today. Uh, we begin with Psalm 44, selected verses from Psalm 44. O God, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the day of, days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arms save them. But your right hand and your arm and the light of your face, for you delighted in them. But you have rejected us and disgraced us and have not gone out with our armies. You have made us turn back from the foe, and those who hate us have gotten spoil. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Yet for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, why are you sleeping, O Lord? Rouse yourself, do not reject us forever. Rise up, come to our help. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. And he has redeemed us for the sake of his steadfast love. There on that cross he died for, for your sins and for my sins and paid the price that we, could not, that we could not pay. The sinless one took upon himself your sins and my sins and, and took those sins to the cross. And it just didn't end there, my friends, as we know that he rose again and because of that, then you and I have that newness of life and through him we have the forgiveness of our sins. Thanks be to God for that, as we still, in this time and in this place, in this world, we still struggle with sin. Today we read from Ezekiel, uh, the first four verses, our reading for today, the first four verses from Ezekiel chapter 40, and then we're going to jump to Ezekiel chapter 43, verses 1 through 12. In the 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the city was struck down, on that very day the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me to the city. In visions of God he brought me to the land of Israel and set me down on a very high mountain, on which was a structure like a city to the south. When he brought me there, behold, there was a man whose appearance was like bronze, with a linen cord and a measuring reed in his hand. And he was standing in the gateway, and the man said to me, Son of man, look with your eyes and hear with your ears, and set your heart upon all that I shall show you, for you were, were brought here in order that I might show it to you. Declare all that you see to the house of Israel. Then he led me to the gate, the gate facing east. And behold, the glory of God of Israel was coming from the east. And the sound of his coming was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. And the vision I saw was just like the vision that I had seen when he came to destroy the city, and just like the vision that I had seen by the Chebar Canal. And I fell on my face. As the glory of the Lord entered the temple by the gate facing east, the Spirit lifted me up, and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. 
While the man was standing beside me, I heard one speaking to me out of the temple, and he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever. And the house of Israel shall no more defile my holy name, neither they nor their kings, by their whoring and by the dead bodies of their kings at their high places, by setting their threshold by my threshold, and their doorpost beside my doorpost, with only a wall between me and them. They have defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed, so I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put away their whoring and the dead bodies of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in their midst forever. As for you, son of man, describe to the house of Israel the temple, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and they shall measure the plan. And if they are ashamed of all that they have been done, make known to them the design of the temple, its arrangement, its exits, and its entrances, that is, its whole design, and make known to them as well all its statutes and its whole design and all its laws, and write it down in their sight, so that they may observe all its laws and all its statutes and carry them out. This is the law of the temple. The whole territory on the top of the mountain all around shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the temple. That's where our reading ends uh, for today. Um, <clears throat> this description in here that we see in verse 10 of chapter 43, beginning there, it really speaks of... Um, God, how uh, God uh, that that the people that we His people are able to see our iniquities and we are ashamed of them when we see our sin, see the the the, the terrible sinners that we are. It what that does, uh, dear friends, is it drives us back to our baptism where we know that God uh, God there in those waters put to death. All of this, all of our sin, um, and we we have that assurance, and we know that uh, we uh, those those sins, uh, and we have put that away, and we do that when we when we repent, and we come to Him, and when the Holy Spirit shows us and repents us of our sins, then it is there that we are constantly, as the Holy Spirit does at work in us, and continues to drive us back uh, to our baptisms, where we know that in those waters we were sealed with the cross of Christ. And he says that uh, in, in verse 6, 7 here, he says, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever. In Christ's reign, we are now his church, and, and he reigns, God reigns, Jesus on his throne reigns forever and ever. And we are there amongst him, and, and, and it says that he will dwell in the midst of peop, the people of Israel forever and ever. Do you get this picture here? The word that we heard in Israel of Emmanuel, meaning God with us, God coming down to us. Jesus comes and he dwells with us now. He's in our midst. How does he do that? He is with us uh, here in this time, in this place. When we partake of his, of his holy supper, it is there in, with, and under that bread and that wine that Jesus, his body and his blood are present. It's real. It's for us, dear saints. This, this is Him dwelling among us in this time. And again, as I said yesterday, it gives us a foretaste of that great feast that we, we will partake of. So these, these great visions, and if you, look at, if you were to look at more of chapter 40 on your own, you'll find that there's more descriptions in there of this, of this holy temple. And uh, as, as I looked at that too, it reminded me of how um, 
these, these, I, this idea about precision and, and taking care and doing things and uh, uh, being reverent about everything that we do um, uh, is another, I think, is another thing that we can certainly uh, take away from that. Um, I think that's a good place probably to, to, uh, to stop today. Uh, and I think there's just a, we have a few readings left here in Ezekiel and we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, finishing, finishing up that book here very soon. Well, we can, uh, <clears throat> let's confess uh, our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. O oh God, we give you thanks and praise today that in this epiphany tide that we are reminded, O oh Lord, that you came and you sent your Son, and you now dwell among us, and that, that light has shined, your light has shined among the nations. Oh Lord, we thank you that you've, you've called us to be uh, your adopted sons and, and your children, and that we belong to you, O oh Lord. And we know that you dwell among us, and you are now with us uh, forever and ever, and that you've sent your Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us and and continue to strengthen us and renew us here in this time. Until that day comes, O Lord, when we will, we will know in eternity uh, what, no more sin, no more sorrow. And we will, we will be united with you uh, forever and ever in that time. We give you thanks and praise today for the glorious gift of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear saints, it's been great being with you again today, and I'll see you once again uh, tomorrow.